What's the point, Richard Dawkins? But he's a zealous evangelical atheist. Now, let's see if his beliefs come from observation and experimentation, science, or whether they come from what I said they come from, a deep-seated hatred for God. Here's what Richard Dawkins says about God in his book. The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. Jealous and proud of it. A petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak. A vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser. A misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. Well, tell us how you really feel, Richard Dawkins. You can tell here that he hates God. He hates God all of, in all of fiction. And he's, he's read a lot of fiction. I mean, the God of the Bible is worse than Darth Vader. And the God of the Bible is worse than the emperor. You know, the God of the Bible is worse than all the villains of science fiction. But, you know, oh, he's such a bully. So, now, but look, I have to give Richard Dawkins credit for one major achievement. You know, I'm, I'm going to be balanced up here. Because this guy did contribute something. Okay, you know how when you're on Facebook, there are these things called memes. Who knows what I'm talking about? Listen to me. Don't tell me that evolutionary biologists don't invent anything. Don't tell me that we do not benefit as humanity from these scientists such as quantum physicists, theoretical astrophysicists, and evolutionary biologists. Oh, no, these guys are bringing something to the table. Did you know that Richard Dawkins came up with that word meme? The word that we've all wondered how to pronounce our whole lives. Is it ma'am? Is it meme? Is it may may me me? You know, nobody knows how to pronounce it. it. You know, couldn't you have come up with something where people would just know how to pronounce it, Richard Dawkins? But no, he came up with that term meme. So he, ha he is uh, uh, someone who's contributed to the, our quality of life. Listen to this. This is from Wikipedia. Fathering the meme is what this section on Wikipedia is called. So this guy is surviving. He is propagating his gene pool more than just through that one daughter because he fathered the meme. Dawkins coined the word meme, the behavioral equivalent of a gene, as a way to encourage readers to think about how Darwinian principles might be extended beyond the realm of genes. Get it? Meme gene? Because memes are not always copied perfectly. Don't you hate that? They might become refined, combined, or otherwise modified with other ideas. This results in new memes, which may themselves prove more or less efficient replicators than their predecessors. I'm sorry, I got to get out the Dr. Spurgle glasses. <laughs> Thus providing a framework for a hypothesis of cultural evolution based on memes. A notion that is analogous to the theory of biological evolution based on genes. <laughs> so basically what he's saying is, you know, yeah, evolution. Haven't you seen how memes evolve? <laughs> Hello, memes evolve. Well, guess what? So does everything else. <laughs> And if we could just get people to see how memes evolve, maybe they'll understand that everything else evolved. Now, although Dawkins invented the term meme, he's not claimed that the idea was entirely novel. There have been other expressions for similar ideas in the past. Now, the popularization of these things led to the emergence of a new field called memetics. I mean, you've heard of genetics? Well, now there's a new field called memetics, a field from which Dawkins has distanced himself. <laughs> Hey, so memetics is the bastard son of Richard Dawkins. He gave birth to a whole branch of science, and he won't even claim it as his own. Come on, own it, Richard Dawkins. Be proud of it. A whole branch of science. You came up with it. He's like, whoa, no, I don't, I don't want anything to do with, you know, all those, me all those memes on Facebook. I don't want to be associated. You know, those memes are evolving, my friend. Case closed.
Let me read that again. Because there is, a, and I'll read a little further this time. Because there is a law such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Spontaneous creation is the reason that there's something rather than nothing. Why the universe exists, why we exist. It's not necessary to invoke God to light the blue touch paper and set the universe going. So you may ask yourself the question, you know, well, how can the universe create itself? Because gravity. Oh. Hello, idiot. <laughs> how dare you? Wait, wait a minute. Do you even have a degree? Do you have a degree in science? And I'm not talking about memetics, okay? I'm talking about real science. I mean, do you have a degree in evolutionary biology? Do you have a degree in astrophysics? Do you have a degree in any kind of science? Huh? Because you can't even hold a candle to these great men who preach this sci-fi religion. And listen to me. I don't care if you understand or not. The universe can and will create itself from nothing because gravity. Because gravity. Case closed. And if you don't get it, well, you're just too dumb to get it. And I, I don't know what to tell you. Because there's a law such as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Uh, it, doesn't this really bring new meaning to the verse, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools? Yeah. <laughs> now, how can you dare insult the intelligence of Stephen Hawking? Now, if some guy told you that in the street, you'd say, go home, you're drunk. <laughs> But because it's Stephen Hawking, you know, we take it real seriously, and it's repeated in the news. This, this quote was all over the news as being profound. It's amazing. I mean, it's, have you read Stephen Hawking's new book? It's fascinating. I mean, it's like a bestseller book. Well, look at Psalm 2, verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. And that's what we see now. The rulers uniting together, the United Nations, and they take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed or, or his Christ, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. You say, why do you laugh at these guys this morning? Why do you mock them? Why do you mock a guy in a wheelchair? I mean, come on. You wouldn't mock a guy in glasses, would you? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. The reason I mock, the, the Lord's going to mock. Amen. He said, I'll mock when your fear cometh. Right. The Lord shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Look at Psalm 2, verse 1. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. And that's what we see now. The rulers uniting together, the United Nations, and they take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed or, or his Christ, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. You say, why do you laugh at these guys this morning? Why do you mock them? Why do you mock a guy in a wheelchair? I mean, come on. You wouldn't mock a guy in glasses, would you? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. The reason I mock, the, the Lord's going to mock. Amen. He said, I'll mock when your fear cometh. Right. The Lord shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. But listen, they already have the technology where they can read people's minds to an extent. You know, we showed a little bit of this in After the Tribulation, but... For example, they took this cat and they tapped into this cat's brain where they play what it sees through its eyes. They played it on a screen and it was kind of blurry. It wasn't perfect, but it, I mean, you could see what the cat was seeing and they were reading its brain, reading its mind, what it was seeing and putting it on a screen. I mean, imagine that. It's creepy, isn't it? But these are the type of things that they just get excited about. They salivate over this. Oh, this is so amazing. You know, these, these discoveries. Because, you know, this is what they're into. It's transhumanism. All right, I got to get out the, the Dr. Spurgle glasses for this. <laughs> It's so amazing because we're going to reach a whole new stage of evolution. <laughs> for billions of years. You know, we've been evolving at a slow rate, but now we're going to rapidly 
you know, go into this new phase. And, and they even talk about how, like, you know, we might even be left behind. You know, the transhumans are going to take over. You know, in every, every science fiction where they create, like, an artificially intelligent machine, it always takes over and kills everybody. You know what I mean? It's like, well, what do we need you for? <laughs> and it takes over, you know. But, oh, even if we all die, it's still so cool because, I mean, it's the next step of evolution. I just hope it happens in my lifetime so I can see it, you know. That, that's the way these people talk. Yeah. Here's what we believe, okay, is that, and, and again, I am not into science. I just want you to know I'm not like a big science guy. Um, science is not my forte. Uh, I'm not against science. Um, you know, I only play a scientist on TV. <laughs> you know, I'm... And I've had a, an independent fundamental Baptist preacher look me in the face and say, the Spanish Bible, every time English goes with ghost, should say, holy ghost. Like, ghost. Because that's what fantasma means in Spanish. That's all it means. And if you, if you start talking to Spanish people about the fantasma santo, they're going to freak out. <laughs> But your Ruckmanite friends are going to love you. They're going to love it. They're going to be like, finally, we have a reliable Bible in Spanish. We finally, the, you know, we finally got the right Bible in Spanish. It actually says a different word for ghost and spirit. Finally, it's accurate. They would love it. If you came out with a Bible that said Fantasma Santo, Ruckmanites would buy it up and love it. This is amazing. So, you know, you have people... Uh, saying, oh, the earth is flat, but hold on a second. We can physically demonstrate a thousand different ways that the earth is a globe. Amen. Oh, but the, Bible's, the Bible never says it's flat. Right. Just do a little search on the word flat. Just type in flat earth, zero results. The Bible says God sits on the circle of the earth. God says that the earth hangs on nothing. The Bible teaches the truth about it, but some people will try to twist the Bible, but, and then you're like, hey, idiot, the earth's round. Here's a hundred reasons. They're like, well, you got to show me from the Bible. What? I, sorry, I don't have to show you everything from the Bible. Like, like, for example, you know, I don't have to show you from the Bible that the sky is blue. I'm like, well, let's see. Is there a, is there a verse that mentions the sky being blue? Because this idiot won't believe it's blue. Couldn't I just take him outside and just be like, all right, look. <laughs> But today, we have people who just deny reality. They're literal reality deniers. Just you show, it was like, but, this is what we used to do when we were kids and we didn't want to listen to them. But, but, who did that when you were a kid? <laughs> and you know, in my book, you know who the person of the year is? It's not that little sniveling Swedish brat. Oh, how dare you talk about her that way? She's a child. She's a brat. And you know what? What is this, like some child human shield soldier or something? Like, like basically, they just put out this child to spew all their junk. Yeah. And then, they, oh, you can't say, you wouldn't hit a guy with glasses, would you? <laughs> you wouldn't criticize this retarded-looking 16-year-old, would you? <laughs> yeah, I sure would, you little devil. You're going to yeah. split hell wide open.